Okay, good, uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, my name's Phil Levy, I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor of Student Learning, if you haven't met me, although there are some familiar faces, which I'm very pleased to see here uh, to me. And I'm going to talk um, about uh, teaching matters and teaching matters in the, uh, in the uh, submission that you make. Um, and just offer some tips uh, about the teaching portfolio, really. Um, so I'll try and speak fairly rapidly through the slides and give some time for, for questions. Um, so um, the key components of your application in terms of the teaching portfolio and what you want, how you want to present yourself as an excellent teacher. Um, first of all, you need to think about the information that you want to provide. That's sort of the neutral, the information. I'll talk a little bit about what that might look like. Then you want to really highlight the evidence of the effectiveness of what you do. So that's evidence. And then you will pro be providing some commentary and analysis on the evidence. Really talking about how you use evidence of that, that you get, perhaps feedback that you get from students, from other sources about your teaching to further develop your teaching. Okay, so it's more than just a list of activities and contributions, things you do. That's the information bit. Uh, that's important, but it's not, it's not enough. And ultimately, what you're seeking to provide is evidence of a, a scholarly approach to teaching that you are somebody who um, approaches teaching with a mind view whereby you're, you're, you know, you're looking at what you're doing, you're thinking about it in relation to the feedback that you gain, you're making adjustments, um, you're observing impact on students' learning experiences and outcomes, and you're continuously enhancing your teaching. So I think there's a, there's a spectrum of um, activity that, that relates to scholarly teaching or that, can, that, that comprises scholarly teaching. And um, you may not feel that you, 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 your, your activities cover all of this. That's absolutely fine. That's fine because different individuals have, you know, um, are doing different amounts of teaching. Um, and you wouldn't be expected necessarily um, in, in, in relation to your experience to be covering all these elements of the spectrum. But I think the foundational one, of course, is, is maintaining a deep knowledge of your discipline and how knowledge is created in your discipline. So through, through research um, and, and other, other knowledge creation activities, keeping abreast of contemporary developments, knowing your stuff, you know. Um, that's really the foundation of scholarly teaching, of course. And then thinking about how you apply sound pedagogy sound understanding of learning and teaching in the discipline to how you go about teaching. There's no one recipe about how to go about teaching in your, in your discipline, um, but what are the principles that you apply and why and how does that look and with what impact uh, does, that, you know, does that make on the student experience? Integrating discipline knowledge effectively in curriculum development and learning resource creation, so you may have done uh, particular work around that, creating content, whether that be textbooks, whether it be digital resources. So um, thinking about how you integrate your, your personal knowledge base um, into, into resource creation for students. So that's really about pedagogy and, uh, and, and learning resources. Then there's the enhancing pedagogical practice through a range of activities, through critical reflection and inquiry, you may be carrying out evaluation of innovations, you may be carrying out research into what you do, or you may be, you may be a member of um, a community of practice where you have opportunities to discuss your teaching and you get feedback um, from, from colleagues. Uh, you, of course, get student feedback through ESELs, but you may also um, be running other um, mechanisms for seeking student feedback. Um, you may be gaining peer feedback, um, perhaps formally through peer review, perhaps in less formal ways, but, and that's fine too. Make sure you bring those out. Um, and in informed experimentation, so having a go at doing something new and evaluating it, testing it out. Scholarly teaching also may involve sharing and disseminating what you do. 
So telling others about it um, and putting your, what you do up to, uh, up to scrutiny by peers. And that, again, could take less formal and more formal forms. Um, either is, is fine. Uh, don't forget the informal ways in which you share and disseminate practice. It's easy to think about you know, workshops you might have been invited to, to, to run uh, in, internally or, or, or externally, those kinds of things that we, we do at, a, at that kind of level. But think also about how you, do, you, you share and disseminate, perhaps through um, program teams or course teams, um, and seek to get feedback from colleagues um, in that way. And of course, your leadership contributions. Um, again, could be of, 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 of a number of different kinds and, 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 and levels. Could be about course coordination, program direction, could be about the development of a new, refresh of a new program, the development of a new program. It might be um, that you, you, you play a leadership role at the faculty or in the institutional or sector level. So um, make sure you think about those. That all comes under the, the, the general heading of, of scholarly teaching. So to come back to, and I'll, I'll perhaps highlight a few of those um, in the next few, few slides, just some, some further tips about those. In terms of information, what information should you um, include? Well, of course, you need to include just the details of what you actually do at undergraduate, postgraduate coursework level, um, and, uh, and uh, HDR supervision. So, um, and also the teaching activities and approaches that you use. How do you do it? Do you do SGDE, for example? Are you mainly running lectures, tutorials, lab classes, etc., etc.? Really give the panel a clear picture of what it is you're, you're actually doing and with whom on what courses. Um, don't forget the online aspects of what you do. Very important. We do a lot of blended learning in the, in, in the institution. And you may be doing some, some fantastic stuff online to complement your face-to-face Actually, and if you are talking about online, do also, um, exp it's worth explaining how you use online to complement face-to-face, how they work together, how you design for learning in, in, in that sense. Um, and then an overview of your goals and achievements. Um, a summary of your main strengths. You may have won awards and prizes. Um, so that's information uh, about, about your, your achievements. Okay. And really, I've, perhaps I've talked mostly through this. Information about new courses and programs, approaches that have led to demonstrable improvements, examples of innovation, uh, new approaches to teaching, but also assessment, really important. Yes, please. Hi, uh, Do you prefer to see the application in an informative way or in the context of the teaching philosophy, for example, to put all these aspects in the teaching philosophy format? Or we just address, for example, this criteria. So I, Jenny may be able to, to comment more from the perspective of the panel itself. Um, my instinct would be perhaps to provide kind of factual, uh, some factual information, perhaps up front, just to say this, this is what I do, this is my philosophy. You know, this is how I, you know, and this is how I go about it. So this is my philosophy and this is, and this is how I do it. So, but I don't think there's any one size fits all approach. Um, would that be the case, yeah, Jenny? No, that's right. We see all kinds of different ways people present it. And that's what works for you. Okay. So sometimes people will start with philosophy up front and then present the, the rest of the facts. Um, sometimes people will get a, what I tend to like is a little summary of what the facts up front. Then the that would be that. That would be my probably my preference if I was uh, looking at, at, at this too, because it's nice to have that context right up front. Then you get into the philosophy and, and the how, and you think, okay, yes, it's it's in relation to the you know, this activity. But um, so innovation. Um, ah, okay, evidence. So as I said earlier on, evidence. It's all about how effective what you do is really. Or and um, in relation to students' learning outcomes and your objectives, of course. So it might this could be all sorts of things, but it could be evidence of inclusive teaching strategies, for example, or as evidence of where you're really engage, aiming to engage students actively 
in activity-based learning or in discovery-oriented learning through SGDE. Um, and, and to be able to show not only what you do, but the impact of that on student, as I say, student experience, but especially outcomes. Um, you may also uh, be able to provide evidence of leadership and mentoring and the impact that that has had. Again, it's not just what you've done. You know, I've, I've been a mentor for a number of staff, but how has that affected them? And what have they done? As a, as a consequence of conversations with you to change their practice and improve their practice. You know, that, that kind of thinking. And evidence of leadership in teaching within, within and beyond your, your immediate environment. And again, it's not just, it's not the information. It's about what the impact of that leadership has, has been on, on other people, faculties, institutions, <laughs> whatever. So you'll be drawing on relevant student evaluation data not only perhaps the data that you get from students, but the feedback you provide to students about the changes that you intend to make. You will have evidence of your teaching from peer review. Um, perhaps, perhaps not everybody, there are two streams in the peer review scheme that we currently run. One is less formal and is based on peer, peer support. It's more formatively oriented, that's part P. TRP is the more formal um, scheme where you um, gain um, feedback from two, uh, two peers um, within our peer review college. Um, if you can provide TRP based evidence, that's, that's really strong evidence uh, to support your case. Evidence of reflective practice. Um, you may have made changes as a, as a result of evaluations, literature reviews, whatever, you know, your reading, your going to conferences, whatever. Um, invitations to teach, present or publish, and publication in relevant journals. Okay. Grants and awards for teaching and learning related activity. Qualifications for further study in appropriate higher education studies programs. Again, these things, if you've been on a course and you've you know, really thought about your teaching, changed your teaching as a result, then the next question is, at, with what impact? You, know. uh, you may be an examiner for postgrad theses on higher education, um, and you may be leading workshops and, and teaching seminars and so on. You will have self data, of course. Um, do, uh, of course, consider the nature of the self data that you have. Um, think about the response rate. Uh, and uh, and um, what, it, what it can say meaningfully uh, about, about your, your teaching, the spread of results, um, in relation to the length of the course and the extent of your contribution. So, you know, you're more likely to want to focus on CELTS data where you've, you're perhaps the course coordinator or you've had a very significant chunk of teaching on that course than CELTS data where perhaps you've just done an hour, you know. You're going to have strong, a stronger case to make in the, in the first example. You will want to um, look at and present the, the, the broad agreement uh, percentage scores against those uh, items that are used for broad agreement and compare uh, that with the um, aggregates. So compare your teacher ESELs with those of other teachers in your school, faculty and wider university. If you, if you, if you, you know, if you're up there, um, then you've got a great, you've really got a great case to make if you've got a good response rate or a reasonable response rate. There's a lot of anxiety and concern about CELTS response rates at the moment and we are actually reviewing the way we do CELTS to see if we can't, you know, find ways to increase response rate. So, and I think the panel is aware of um, the challenges of getting, you know, really good response rates around CELTS. Some courses get that, others really don't. And there is awareness, and that will be taken into account, I think, um, in, I'm not sure, in the, in, in, in the uh, panel deliberations. But, you know, where you've got a good response rate or a reasonable response rate, and you've got great comparison data, then put it forward, really highlight it. So, and this is about communicating. Be explicit. What, one of my big tips is, you know, don't take it for granted that... Um, you know, that uh, the information you provide or the evidence that you present is sort of self-evident in terms of what it's saying. It's difficult to, um, it's difficult sometimes to kind of 
perhaps boast, you know. But this is this is the time when you you know you re you really need to you need to point to what the evidence means. Yes. Just a question on the blue slide about the response rate. I'm uh, sorry. A question on the response rate. So in this case, what's the indication threat? Because it's out of our control, the response rate. Just like what's the indication of that? If it's too low or too high? Well, it's just, if the. Uh, whether or not it's out of our control is, another, is perhaps a discussion we, can, we should have on another occasion because it's a really interesting issue, actually. But yes, at the moment, I think response rates certainly are very variable across the institution. And if you have low response rates, um, then um, I think you can, you can, all you can really say is, well, you know, I, how, you, can, you need to acknowledge that and you need to say how you do use that data. What a lot of uh, colleagues say is that even when the quantitative responses, response rate is quite low, the qualitative responses from that small number of um, students um, can be incredibly useful for enhancement and, and development. Um, acknowledging that it's from, nevertheless, coming from a small segment of, of, the, um, of the student body. So there are, there are ways that you can use that data meaningfully, I, I, I think. Um, if you, if you are actually um, doing something over and above CELTS to get feedback from your students uh, about their experience, then do highlight that as well, because I know a lot of colleagues do. Mm -hmm. And that's, that can, that, you know, so you may be gathering more data than comes through CELTS and responding to that. Mm -hmm. on this topic, what's the expected response rate for ESELTS? Uh, there is no expected response rate for ESELTS. Yeah, um, it, it, you know, it, so there's no... Um, there's no expectation. We haven't set that as yet. These things are, it's, we're having some really interesting dis and important discussions about this within the review. Um, but, but broadly speaking, 30% um, or 35% is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, and that's not just in this institution, but across the sector. So, yeah. And we have to be pragmatic. You know. um, so, um, comment, on, comment on the evidence. Um, and provide some, some, some reflection about you know, how the feedback you receive relates to how you think about teaching, how you've responded. And it may be occasionally that you, you, know, you haven't responded to what students have requested because you have ju taken a judgment about what, you know, the, the way that you should do your teaching uh, in this class. And so that's fine. Um, you need to provide your own uh, analysis and, 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 and provide a justification for how you respond to, to feedback, both to student feedback and also to perhaps peer review feedback and other uh, peer feedback. And think about what other factors might have contributed to good or poor outcomes. Uh, so it's all about demonstrating reflection. That's all um, I had prepared to say. Um, your teaching portfolio, as you know, um, is, 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 uh, its purpose is, is this. It is a really important part of your submission. Teaching does matter. The teaching portfolio really matters. There are lots of ways that you can demonstrate good practice and excellence in teaching, uh, drawing, on, drawing on data uh, at your disposal. So do, do really take that part very seriously. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Yes. Uh, is it compulsory to have the form of the review for when we apply for level C? I'm sorry, the compulsory to have the... Uh, the form of the review for teaching. Um, it's not compulsory, no. It's, um, it, it's available um, for those colleagues who would, like to, who would like to do that. There is a currently a round taking place. Um, it, would, it is too late to, to be involved in the current round. Um, but um, <coughs> look out for, for opportunities in, in the future. Um, we have got quite a lot of colleagues, actually, who are participating in that round, which is great. It's not compulsory. But it will strengthen, I think, if you... If you, you know. in, in fact, we were asked to um, withdraw it, you were inundated with applicants so we, to make development next Okay, so if there are colleagues who are wishing to go for promotion very... It isn't required. That's true. It isn't required. It's a useful thing to have. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick comment on that. 
there are some areas in which it's essential because some areas do themselves. They do not have the numbers because the numbers are so small. And again, especially um, the two areas that always come up, the clinical areas and elder con, where we've got one-to-one -one and the salts are identified because we don't use them. So in that case, peer review is essential. That is, that's but correct. For most yeah. of you, you will have enough data from your CELTS to cover the requirement there. You've got to provide a set number. So um, it's only an issue if you've got gaps. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that the part that you're giving your e process, mm. with the permission of our peer, yeah. can we use that? Data? Absolutely. I would really encourage that. Um, yes, absolutely. So if you if you are in a in part in partly, which is the informal um, peer support process, and you've and you've re received feedback through that process, and you can also demonstrate what you've done um, in response to that feedback, then that, I think that's great. Yeah.